Have you ever wondered exactly what will it take to be successful in real estate, but without sacrificing your family, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, and actually growing a business that you love? Well, today I am going to share with you five habits that I promise you start implementing these and you will have a business that is both profitable and enjoyable. I'm Rosemary Lewis, your real estate bestie, and I help women in real estate build businesses that they love while deepening their faith and developing their relationships with Jesus. Now, today we are going to talk about some baseline habits, and I want you to stick around, especially for the last one, because not only is it going to have you shift from being somebody who's running around, just hustling every single day, but to actually developing a business. And I know that in this real estate world, a lot of times we think that we just need more leads and we need to do more open houses and we need more and more and more and more and more. But these baseline habits that I am going to share with you today, I'm telling you, it will help you create a system on how you are organizing each day. And let me tell you something, what you do on a day is going to be represented on how your weeks and months and years are gonna go and it is so important. So let's hop into habit number one. The very first thing that you need to do in order to be successful is learn the art of time blocking. Now, I may sound like a broken record on this one, but literally when I got into real estate and started seeing, you know, four or five, six closings per month and other agents would ask me, like if I had to point to one activity that I was doing consistently to help me see, get to these consistent results, what would it be? and it literally was time blocking. So if you don't truly know what time blocking is, let me tell you, it is basically telling your time where to go. Now, a lot of people get it confused because I know you keep a Google Calendar, you have all of your tasks, all of your appointments on your calendar, but that is different from taking time before your day or before your week starts and really thinking through, okay, what are the areas of my life where I need to show up? Where do I need to show up in my business? And what am I going to make non-negotiable? Then you are going to literally look at the day and you are going to block times for specific activities. When you don't block your time, then guess what? everybody else just takes it, right? Have, have you ever looked up? I had, it happened to me the other day. I looked up and there was just a meeting on my Google calendar because somebody invited me to it. And if I didn't have the art of time blocking down, the art of telling my time where to go, then I would have been committed to this thing that would not move the needle in my life and in my business. So I want you to start actually time blocking. I have a video that goes even deeper into the concept of time blocking. I'm going to link it here and you wanna make sure that you check it out. Now, here's habit number two that goes hand in hand with habit number one. Actually, follow the time block. Now, this may seem natural like Rosemary, of course I am going to follow the time block. I took my time and I did it. But I know you, friend, I know that sometimes things get in the way and you are not always keeping the promises that you made to yourself like time block. I have been slaved in the kitchen on a Sunday afternoon, making my meal prep only to forget the lunch or not eat it or want something different. And I didn't actually use the tools and the resources available to me. And as a result, I didn't get the results. You do not want your time that to happen with your time, okay? Your time is a non-renewable resource. So get into the habit of however you time block. If you time block for a, on a weekly basis, go back every single night and make sure that you are looking and you are clear on what your activities that you need to do the next day. And if you time block every single day, you know what, that is fine. But make sure that you have a time during the day where you are going to stop, assess where you are, what you got completed, and time block for the very next day. Now, let me give you a ninja tip. If you are the type of person, whether you're reviewing your time block because it's a weekly time block or it's a daily time block and you're writing it, don't let it go to the end of the night, okay? That is a recipe for disaster. You want to make sure that you're looking at your time block, I would say mid-afternoon, maybe before you're going out for your appointments or as you're wrapping up the majority of your office day. And then that way, you, you, you're gonna be clear, like, okay, what else am I gonna get accomplished tonight? 
All right, fine. So everything else, let me block my time tomorrow so that I can start to move the needle. I'm telling you, you follow habits one and two, you are going to see such a big difference in your life and in your business. Now, let's talk about habit number three. There is a term called eat the frog. And what that really means is you want to get that most laborious thing, that thing that it may not be the hard activity, but the activity that you know that is going to be necessary in business. And you want to get that done as early as possible. So eat the frog, get it done sooner rather than later. For many real estate agents, that is going to be making your calls and whatever lead gen conversations or lead gen activities that you are going to be doing. I've worked with agents, okay? I get to coach agents and even myself, I'm telling you, when I look at my time block and when I say to myself, oh, I'm going to get on the phones at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or the other days when I try to move it around and get on the phone at 2 p.m., guess which one gets left off? When I push that major activity to later in the day, it is more likely that it's gonna fall off and not get done because I didn't prioritize it first thing. Now, I do want you to know yourself, know that know when you are better, right? I do have some people that really truly think that they are better in the afternoons, they're gonna be more sharper when they're having these conversations, but take an assessment, right? I want you to also assess your process, assess your time block. So if you know you're better in the afternoon, however, you look and in the course of a week, you only actually block time to have conversations one time per week, then you probably need to learn to get better earlier in the day. So when we eat the frog, when we do the most difficult activity or the activity that we just really don't want to do earlier in the day, trust me, you are going to get better. Just like me. I don't, I mean, I do like working out, but if I don't work out in the morning, the likelihood of me doing it and accomplishing it later on after I've had a full day of real estating, it's probably not gonna happen. Okay, here's number four habit, and we don't talk about this enough. I want you to get into the habit of learning something new every single day. Now, this is an opportunity that I feel like most real estate agents fail at because, you know, you think you know everything. And I'm not saying being all of the real estate conferences. I'm not saying you have to listen to webinars, but like literally, like what can you do to expand your professional knowledge about the profession, about the problems and the challenges that your clients have? Or how about this? What about your local market, right? What if every single day you committed yourself to learning about a new restaurant in the area you serve, or you learn something that's happening at the schools, or you learn about, you know, the new rollout that the builders are doing and what their incentives are, or the new community that's coming. What that's going to do, it's going to build your capacity to become a local expert and it will take you so far. And also when you're thinking about things that you can learn every day, I am a huge proponent of just growing professionally and personally. So listen, when you're in my car, we likely never listen to the radio. There's always like an audio book or a podcast or something on that is going to get me to thinking and expanding to help me expand my vocabulary, to help me expand my worldview. And it is definitely has been a game changer in how I approach everyday situations because I'm always looking to see what I can learn. So I'm telling you, this may seem so crazy, but it will take you very far in your life and in your business if you are always out seeking information. Now here's habit number five, and it goes with habit number four. When you learn it, now it's time to give it away. And this is the game changer because this is the thing that is going to position you as a resource for the people that you serve. Now you've probably heard me say it before on the podcast or on YouTube, if we've coached together, is that one thing that I love about my clients or even just people that I have come in contact with, I love it when they reach out to me for a non real estate related question. And you might be thinking to yourself like, I'm, is that like, opposite don't you want them to reach you out to you for real estate and yes i do want them to reach out to me for real estate and they do 
But when I position myself as a resourceful person, even when they are not themselves in the market to buy or sell, but they know that Rosemary is always talking about the new restaurant or I'm sharing my Costco finds or I'm sharing what I'm reading or what I'm learning. There are just so many other parts of their lives that I can be helpful in. Now I remain top of mind and that's what you want to do. So find ways to share the things that you are learning. Okay. You can share it on social media. If you have an email marketing platform, you know, don't just send houses and talk about the real estate market. Talk about the new restaurant. Talk about, you know, the new recipe that you made. Talk about the new area that's opening up. Just different things to position you as an expert. And trust me, okay, these simple things once you implement them into your daily routine and into your business, you are going to see more consistency because you're going to have something to talk about. Everybody says, hey, follow up, you know, for there's fortune in the follow up. But if you're only following up, asking that very boring question, you know, are you still thinking about buying or selling? No. Now you can follow up with actually some true value things that can help them in their life and it will reciprocate in your business. Trust me. Now, if you want to go even deeper, I have a specific strategy that I teach that will help you double your sales in real estate. You can click the link exactly where you're watching this video to go to the next, or if you're listening on the podcast, head on over to rosemarylewis.com forward slash 193 to learn exactly how to double your sales. I hope this was helpful, Bestie. I am so excited to continue to help you along your real estate journey, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.